Hi, I'm Max from the CWB Association. And I'm Guy and I'm a welder and I'm also an educator. At the Association, our membership sends in questions all the time. One of the questions that we always get is how do you fabricate something on site but you have to build it in your house? There's a lot of different steps and my friend Guy here is going to help us figure it out. So what if you had to do a handrail on site? Someone says, hey, I got some steps, I'd like to build a handrail. How would you approach that? So you can see here, there's a bit of a mock-up on the floor right now. So for myself, is what I would do is I would go to the job site, I would actually take some accurate measurements and I would transfer those to a basic sketch. From there, I would take that basic sketch and lay it out either on a fabrication table or any flat open space where, where I can work and I can actually take these measurements and create myself a bill of material, cut my material, come back, put it on my template, and make sure that everything's square. And so if up. you don't have a big enough table, you know, lots of us don't have a big garage, laying it on the floor like this would work fine? Yeah, I actually came in and I used the, uh, the expansion joint on the, on the concrete pour for the, for the pad. So, uh, you know, that was, that was fairly straight. And then I started drawing my lines straight up. I know that I need to be 36 inches to the top of the handrail on both sides. And in this case here, we actually have an eight inch difference, differentiation from the top rail and the bottom rail. Now, what would you mount it to? Let's say you can't drill into the steps or weld it right to the floor. Okay, so that's why we have these sono tubes. That's why we have the concrete cord. Now, this will be a choice of yours. Are you gonna drill your holes? Are you gonna uh, put in anchor bolts? Are you gonna epoxy them? Or maybe you're gonna set your anchors in with the concrete before you uh, before you even mount the handrail. Now, is that a decision that you would make or would you have to talk to like the person who wants the handrail put in to see what's best? Yes, of course. We're always working with the customer. This is just a mock-up, but if the customer would like that, for myself, I think I would go ahead and drill and then pour the epoxy just because there's less stress associated with it. I don't want that sauna tube to crack. That would be, you know, that would be detrimental. Start from the beginning again, right? Yeah, we would have to get some more epoxy and, and we'd have to build it up and make sure that it's all. So how do you decide where to start with the layout and then how do you lay it out? Okay, so it's always smart to start on a baseline. And, you know, as much as we're looking at this crack that, you know, has some chips out of it, it is fairly straight. And I'm working off this baseline here and then I'm measuring up. And with my square, with my angle finder, and even just a giant straight edge, I'm able to reproduce this on the floor. And if you don't got a straight edge, like from a hardware store, what can you use? Well, I'm guaranteeing you have a straight edge because you probably purchased the material that you're gonna build this thing out of, right. right? So, you know, in this case here, I think we had some 10 foot lengths, worked out perfect. You know, I can set my top, we can do the middle, and we can do our, our uprights. How did you decide what type of material to use when you want to build this? So again, that, that's a conversation that you should have with the customer. Um, we always like to push aluminum just because it doesn't rust. Uh, the customer is less likely to come back. You know, you can sand it down a little bit. You can even powder coat it. But sometimes, you know, some spray cans, aluminum, and a little bit of sanding can really do a nice job on this. But you'll have to have an AC machine if you want to do aluminum. So if you're in your little house or in your garage and you don't have the ability to weld aluminum, steel's fine? Steel is 100% fine. Even these little flux core machines we have at home, right? Self-shielding, no gas. You know, we can use one of those to build this. Heck, we're gonna grind down these welds anyway. Right. So when I'm going to build this, is there any rules or codes that I gotta worry about? Yeah, you're gonna to wanna to look into your jurisdiction, make sure that you're following those, those codes, especially if it's a commercial build. Um, even CWB, the structural code, may have something that you have to you have to follow. So I saw you laid this out and I see some features here that I'm not sure I understand. So you have the posts down there and they have, you said an eight inch run, right? Correct. And that would be the slope of the floor of where we're gonna put this at. Correct. So if we, th we refer to think of the staircase coming down, we would start off by running a string line from the top to the bottom, leveling out that string line and then measuring our height or the difference from the top and the bottom. So in this case here, we just have two posts. However, if we had a longer handrail and there was more slope to this, well, then we would just measure the difference between each one. Okay. And now what about the height? You said this is 36 inches high. Why 36 inches? 36 inches is a good height. It does actually meet codes. 
again, you would have to check in your area to make sure that you're, you're meeting that code. And this overhang on the end, is that just for looks or is there a reason? Yeah, we, we gave it an eight inch overhang on each side and that I find that just finishes it off. It kind of gives it a nice little touch as opposed to squaring it off. And the person using it, you know, it has a little bit of a finish, you know, it doesn't just drop off to nothing. But that's aesthetic. So there, it can be done however someone wants to do. Once you have this basic drawing, you can kind of decide if you want to get fancy with it, right? Of course, we could have done this out of brown uh, pipe. We could have done this out of tubing. We could have done this out of wrought iron. It's the, you know, the sky's the limit on this stuff here. This is a basic, this is where you should start. You know, if it's, if it's something you've never done before, square is a little bit easier to work with than round, of course. Right. So this, uh, this works out. And this middle piece here, is that just for strength? Or does it serve another purpose? Yeah, this is gonna lock in the handrail completely, but it also kind of gives it a nice touch, gives it a nice look. Right. Okay, well, I think I got all the questions I need answered for this. I'd love to see how this becomes real. Great. Do it. So now that we have a real life representation of our handrail that we're going to be using, I can come in and I can take some accurate measurements and I can transfer it over to my BOM or my bill of material. So if we open our angle finder right now. We want to take an angle inside. We've got about 83.4 degrees, so I'm going to record that. So that tells me that this, this cut right here is going to have an 83.4 degrees cut. I'm going to do the same thing on that end, and guess what? This all ends up being 83.4 everywhere. So one angle, one measurement. I've done this a few times, that's how I know this. But if we put our angle finder on here, you'll, you'll find the exact same measurement. Okay, so now that we've got our measurements, let's go over to the saw. All right, now that we have our material cut to length, we're gonna start cleaning up these ends and we're actually gonna wipe down our material as well because there's a lot of oil from the saw, there's oil from the factory, and we're gonna just kind of wipe some of that off and we're gonna give it a good polish once we weld it, once we finish it all. But for now, just on the joints at least, we're gonna get some of that stuff and we're gonna grind off the mill scale. We're gonna clean up our ends, make sure there's no sharp ends on them. Now let's have a look at some of the tools we're gonna be using and we, we've seen these a little bit earlier as well. We've got our angle finder, we've got a combination square, of course we've got our soapstone, we've got our tape measure, grinder. I've got a nice flapper wheel on this. This is nice and soft. It's not gonna give me a sharp, jagged edge on there. And the most important right now, once I go to start fabbing, there are these hand clamps. And I've got a whole pile of them because I wanna clamp this down and make sure that it doesn't move on me sure it doesn't distort too much and I'm going to strategically tack this so that it all comes together nicely. Okay, now you can see that I've got everything in place. We have to make a few arrangements with our clamps because they wouldn't reach from, uh, from the edge of the table all the way in. So we just have some square bar that's coming along and it's holding this guy down. Now, the other thing we changed a little bit was our top rail. We decided to go with a larger size top rail. We've got an inch and a half and the rest of this handrail is an inch and a quarter. Now we're gonna start welding this thing up. We've cut our base plates. These are gonna go on the end. These are gonna get tacked up nice and welded center on, on that base. And the last thing we'll do before welding this thing out is we're actually gonna cap our ends and we're just gonna seal these off to kind of give it a nice finish. So as always, it's important to grab the proper PPE for the task that we're gonna do. For me, I'm gonna grab my helmet, everything I need in my gloves, and we're gonna get welding. All right, so before I get tacking, I'm actually gonna check all my angles and make sure that everything is still square exactly where it's supposed to be. It could have shifted a little bit and I'm gonna strategically tack where I need it. So if I know that my, my square bar is leaning to one side, well, I'm probably gonna tack that side or the opposite side to where it needs to pull just so that I don't get hung up and I have to cut that tack out after.
All right, Max, so we've got our railing all tacked up right now. We didn't weld it out yet. That'll be the next step. But just like any fabrication project, we've got steps to follow, right? So we took our measurements from site. We took those, we sketched them out. We brought them back to the shop. We laid them out on the floor and we actually laid out that 2D dimension on the table as well. And once we got that, we were able to take our, our angles, take our measurements over to the saw, make our cuts, and then lay that back onto the table and start fitting. Although we have a representation of our handrail here, I'm not using those lines for 100% accuracy. I'm coming in and I'm checking with my square, I'm measuring, I'm also checking with the angle finder. Wow. That turned out really well, and it didn't take very long at all. Good job. Should we do a test fit and see how it fits in the field? I'd say we're pretty flat over here. We've got our eight inches. I'd be happy, I'd be confident with that install. All right, so I'm really happy the way this turned out, Max. Um, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching. And as always, keep those lenses clean.